this tutorial will literally set up Mojo programming language with one click. I think what I am going to explain is a thing that every developer in 2024 and beyond must know. It is a thing that saves you tons of hours when debugging software and developing open source projects. I have seen many people having problems setting up Mojo programming language properly. Here's the general picture of what I am going to do. After watching this tutorial, you can test and develop projects on the latest stable version of Mojo programming language without having to worry about things breaking on your system because of missing dependencies and whatnot. Now that you've roughly got an idea of what is going to happen, let's dive into details to save you hours of lifetime. The first thing that we've got to do is set up a GitHub repository. I name my repository mojo-seta, I make it private and add a readme file. Because without any file, the GitHub doesn't allow me to create a code space. Finally click on create repository, now our repository is created. Now I click on the code button, then I click on create code space on main branch. Then you have to wait for the code space to be set up for the first time. Now the code space is loaded with the readme file that we have on our GitHub repository. Now I type pwd to get the full path to my current directory. Remember that our repository's name is mojo-seta. Now I create a folder called div container and inside the div container folder I create a file and call it div container.json. As you can see I have pasted some configuration inside the div container.json file. You can find sample configuration files in the path that I have commented. However, over here we are going to use a configuration file that is customized for Mojo programming language. Since you can have several configuration files, you can set a name for your configuration file. Over here I set it to Mojo Conda because I am going to use the Conda environment for my Python. For the build option, I picked a Docker file. This is super important. You have to put a Docker file. We will create the Docker file later. For host requirements, I picked four CPUs. This is free tier plan of GitHub. There is a forward ports option available. I have commented it. You can add your ports to it. For the customizations, I have added the VS Code option and extensions option. Over here, I list the extensions identifiers that I require for my VS Code setup. The first one is the VS Code extension for Mojo programming language. How can you find the identifier for your VS Code extension? You go to the extensions tab on the VS Code, then search for your extension's name. In the sidebar of the VS Code extension info, you'll find the identifier. If you scroll down and you just copy and paste this identifier and put it in the extensions list. I've already done that, so I don't have to do it twice. And the second line is the identifier for my VS Code theme. The third line is for the Python extension, Jupyter extension, and the GitHub pull request extension. After the VS Code option, we've got post create command option. I have included two commented lines over here. One of them is a link to a GitHub issue that you can find further information. Post create command runs in the workspace folder. For the post create command option, I have given a path to post create command.sh file. This way, I can include multiple lines of commands in my post create command option. So I create the post create command.sh in my div container folder and actually include a comments line to put your post create commands over here. I don't want to put anything over here. This option is just for the possibility of further customization. Now it's time to create the Docker file that we refer to in our build option. We create the Docker file inside our div container folder with the capital D as the first letter. Inside this file, I paste the Docker script that I have written. Don't worry, you don't have to be a Docker ninja or any specialist to understand this script. Basically, a Docker file is a text document that contains instructions for the Docker daemon to follow when building a container image. In simple words, you put some instructions in a text file and this text file will be converted into a container that you can use for your development. The statement from Ubuntu in a Docker file means that the Docker image being built will be based on the Ubuntu image. This doesn't imply installing the entire Ubuntu operating system within the container, but rather using the Ubuntu image as a base. The Ubuntu image provides a file system structure and tools similar to an Ubuntu OS. The shell command uses bash shell to run the instructions and the two arguments that I have provided, one of them is conda underline env and the other git underline repo. 
underline name are the names of my conda environment and my github repository respectively i use the app git update to update the package list and install wget curl and git i define the environment variable mini conda underline version and set it to the latest and use the run command to fetch the conda installation file the other scripts are just for setting up the conda as you can see i have used the mini conda underline version environment variable inside the run command that i've used to fetch the conda installation file finally i activate the base environment by using the conda activate base and put it in the bash rc then I add the conda to the path so I can use it on my terminal. After adding conda to the path, I use the argument that I have defined conda env name and create my conda environment with the name that I've already specified over here that is mojo lang. Note that for creating conda environment, I'm using Python version 3.10. You can define an optional argument for your Python version as well. After creating our conda environment for our python that is going to be used with mojo, we install the mojo by using the commands that are provided on the modular website. You can check out my video on how to install mojo to understand these commands that I use for configuring the mojo after installation. These commands are basically given to you after installing mojo. Finally, I add the conda activate my conda environment name to the bash rc so it will be actually activated instead of the base environment. I've also provided some commented lines so you can use them to actually install packages that you require for your Mojolang environment. By Mojolang, I mean the conda environment that you have specified. Finally, I use the work dir command to actually set the working directory. Over here, I'm using the argument git underline repo underline name that is mojo dash setup that we have already created. Now that we have finished our script for setting up our container or development environment, it's time to actually set the configuration for the Mojo VS Code extension. For this purpose, I create another folder named .vs code and inside .vs code folder, I create a file named settings.json. I paste the configuration for my settings.json file. In the first line, I use the modular underline home environment variable to actually set the modular home path for my Mojo VS Code extension. And on the second line, I use the Atom One Dark theme that I've already specified in my VS Code extensions list by using this identifier. Finally, I create the file main.mojo and inside the main.mojo, I define the main function and inside the main function I print something. This is just a simple script that we will run after our container is built, just to make sure that everything is working as expected. Finally, we have to commit and push everything to our GitHub repository. I've already done that. Because of that, you don't see all of the changes. Please commit and push everything to your GitHub repository. Now that we have pushed everything to our GitHub repository, we will again create a code space. But this time, GitHub will look into .dev container folder and check out dev container.json file and the Docker file that we've already created. GitHub will build our container based on the information that we have provided in the Docker file and dev container.json. Building the container might take some time depending on the instructions that you have provided in the Docker file. We will address this issue that is taking time to build the container and give you the solution to speed up this process later in this video. As you can see, our mojo is set up properly and our conda environment is activated in our terminal. We also see that the VS Code extension for the theme and mojo programming language is activated. First, let me verify that mojo is installed. By calling mojo in the terminal, we see the mojo REPL running 1 plus 1 is 2 and we can actually exit the REPL by hitting Ctrl D depending on your operating system. Now I type conda env list to actually get the list of conda environments as you see the mojo lang environment is created successfully and is activated as you see in the terminal. Finally I open up the main.mojo file, hit the run button and the code successfully runs in the conda environment that we have created for mojo programming language. To further verify the functionality of the mojo vs code extension I type print and hit control the space as you can see I get the auto completion and documentation for the print function. 
One bonus tip is actually to create several configuration files for different operating systems or different container environments. For example, I can put the dev container.json and docker file inside the folder that I create inside the dev container folder. I call it mojoconda and put both the dev container.json and docker file inside that folder. That is, you can create several folders inside that dev container folder, each containing its own docker file and dev container.json file. And inside each folder, you can customize its docker file and dev container.json file. For example, I create a mojo vnv folder and inside this folder I create my own docker file and dev container.json file that is suitable for the mojo running inside the virtual environment, not the conda environment. By virtual environment, I am referring to the Python virtual environment rather than the conda environment. And inside the docker file and dev container.json, you can write whatever you want and pull any image you want. It can be something other than Ubuntu image. You can customize your VS Code extension list, but note that you have to modify the path to the post create command.sh because each of these configuration files inside each folder contains its own post create command.sh. After you have modified each docker file and dev container.json file, you push it to your GitHub repository again and close the running container. Then for creating the code space, you choose which configuration file you want to use to build your container, then you build your container based on that configuration file. For instance, I click on three dots and click on new with options. Then I will be redirected to a page that I can choose my configuration for my dev container. Over here, I only have one configuration that is Mojoconda. Finally, I click on create code space. As promised, only with one click, I created my Mojo programming language development environment. To speed up the build process for our container, I click on setup pre-build and then again I click on setup pre-build and choose my branch over here. Over here I choose the main branch. After that, I choose my configuration file that is the dev container.json that I want to use for this pre-build. Then I scroll down and choose pre-build trigger. This pre-build trigger is kind of trigger that actually builds your image every time based on a particular schedule, on every push or actually configuration change or a scheduled. I use the schedule because new Mojo version will be released based on a particular schedule. By a schedule, I mean time span and I might not change my configuration file in that time period. There are a couple of other options that are actually obvious. And finally, I click on create. And for the first time, the image will be built First, it goes into a queued mode. I can see the output by clicking on the C output, and it shows me the process of actually building the pre build. This way, we speed up the process of building the container by using the pre build. I think this way of using Mojo is actually accessible to everyone because everyone just needs a browser and a GitHub account to test Mojo programming language, or even we can use these dev containers in our open source projects so people can click on the create code space and set up their Mojo development environment so they can actually contribute to your open source project. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my channel to not lose future content on Mojo programming for beginners. As always, see you all later.